Thank you. Lord, we worship you. We bless your holy name. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. We thank you for your word that has come unto us. We thank you for the word that prepared for us. We thank you for your grace. Thank you for your power. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you for not leaving us to the dictates of the enemy. Lord, be glorified in Jesus' name. Father, speak to us. Lord, touch us. Father, be glorified. Accept our thanksgiving this morning. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's have our seats. The message of this morning is going to be very brief. Uh, let's open our Bibles to Acts chapter 16. Acts 16, I read verses 25 and 26. Acts, the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16. I read verses 25 and 26. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16, verses 25 and 26. If you're there, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately, all the doors were opened. And everyone's hands were loosed. Amen. 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 Uh, this morning for a few minutes the topic I want to discuss is what I call why were they singing praise unto God why were they singing praise unto God <coughs> today is the first Sunday in the year 2013 it's our Thanksgiving Sunday and I believe God's injunction to someone here today is sing my praises and as you sing his praises, he will hear you in Jesus' name. Amen. Why were Paul and Silas singing praises unto God in the prison? Is it because they were happy? Were they in the place they wanted to be? No. But they had only one reason. Why they were singing praises in the prison yard. And that's the same reason... You should sing praises all for the rest of this year. Amen. And that is, they expected a visitation. Amen. Tell your neighbor, expect a, expect a visitation. Their physical circumstances was nothing to sing praise about. In fact, are, by any human expectation, they have nothing to look forward onto. Now they could say, okay, by tomorrow, I will go to so-and-so place so I know that it's fine. I mean, they were in prison. <coughs> they were, I mean, and the prison they were in, as far as the authorities were concerned, was the beginning of their problems. So for them, there was no way forward. They couldn't look ahead to anything glorious. But they chose to sing praises unto God. It was a choice that they made. And that's the choice I want you to make for the year 2013. To do what? Praises. Sing praises unto God. Because when you sing praises unto God, like the apostles in this situation, you declare that you expect a visitation. And he will visit you in Jesus' name. What type of visitation were they, were they expecting? The type of visitation that happened when the three Hebrew brethren were cast into the fiery furnace. In Daniel chapter 3, from verses 20 to 27, we see the story of these Hebrew brethren. The Bible says because they refused to worship the king's image, the king declared that the oven or the furnace should be made seven times hotter than normal. And the king in his anger commanded his mightiest men to commit suicide. <laughs> so they should carry this evil brother and throw them into the furnace. In the process, the furnace consumed them. But glory be to God. 
the three Hebrew brethren were visited by the king of kings himself in the furnace. We know the rest of the story. The Bible says when they came out in verse 27 that everybody was looking at this man upon whose bodies the fire had no power. No was and hear of their head sign. Neither were their coats changed. Nor the smell of fire had passed on them. These three brethren expected a visitation and they got it. You get a visitation this year in Jesus' name. They were expecting the type of visitation that Daniel had in the lion's den. Daniel got to the lion's den. And the Bible says in Daniel chapter 6 that even the king himself went home that night doing what? Fasting. That paraventure, the God of Daniel can intervene. Since Daniel was not afraid to go to the lion's den. And the Bible says in verse 19 that the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste to the den of the lions. And he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou serve continually able to deliver thee from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, the fact that Daniel spoke already implied that the, I mean, Daniel had been visited. He said, my God had sent his angel and had shut the lion's mouth. God will send his angels. Amen. And they will shut every last part of your life in Jesus' name. Amen. That's why you should praise God. Irrespective of the situation you find yourself in. Yes, because even though you are surrounded by lions, look much more closely and you will see that their mouths are what? They are short. That's why you see the lions around you, you should be afraid. For all the enemies are just milling around, they cannot even roar. Because the angel of the Lord has done what? Has shut their mouths. Whatsoever stands for the lions of the world in your life, the Lord will shut their mouth today in Jesus' name. Amen. Why were they singing praises unto God? They expected a visitation, brethren. The type of visitation that Peter had in prison. In Acts chapter 12, verse 5, the Bible says Peter was kept in the prison, but prayer was made continually without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod was going to bring him forth, the Lord visited him. You know God's timing is perfect. Do you know that? Amen. Whatever you went through in the year 2012 that you were wondering, would I go through this forever? You wouldn't go through it forever. Amen. Just at the point that Herod, Herod thought that yes, tomorrow morning I'll deal with this man. That night, tell the neighbor that night. That night, the angel of God came. Peter was visited in the prison and he was set free. Even those that were praying for Peter were not praying, expecting him to be set free. I wonder what their prayer points were. God grant himself journey to heaven. Because when Peter came and knocked on the door, and the lady opened the door and saw him, what did she do? She shut the door and said, no, his ghost is by the door. If it's his ghost by the door, why are you praying? When she went and told those who were praying, Peter is by the door. What did they say? You are not serious. We are here to pray. We are not here to joke. God has answered your prayer. Why are you still praying? Once God has answered your prayer, it's time to do what? It's time to praise him. Why were they singing praises? Because they were expecting the type of visitation Peter had in prison. Brethren, Peter was not praying in the prison. What was he doing? 
He was sleeping. He was sleeping in the prison. And then the angel of the Lord came and touched him. And began to take him through all, I mean, the chains fell off. The doors began to open by themselves. And the man thought he was in a vision. He was so used to seeing visions that he was beginning to forget reality. God will lead you through that situation. Amen. I said, God will lead you through that situation. Amen. All you need to do is do what? Sing praises unto him. Because you are due for a visitation. Amen. Can you tell anybody you are due for a visitation? And your visitation is this year in Jesus' name. Amen. Your visitation begins today in Jesus' name. Amen. Your testimony begins right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Why were they singing praises? They expected a visitation. The type of visitation that Joseph had in the prison. The Bible tells me, brethren, that in Genesis chapter 37 verse 2, the Bible starts talking about the genealogy of Jacob. The generations of Jacob. And the Bible says, Joseph, being how many years old? 17 years old. Being 17 years old. When well, you go to verse 5, the Bible says, And Joseph dreamed a dream. And he told it to his brethren. And they hated him yet the more. He was 17 years old. His father loved him. His brethren hated him. Because the Bible, he has set his mind on righteousness. Remember what the Bible says? Thou lovest righteousness. Thou hatest iniquity. Since therefore God thy God has done what? Has anointed thee with the oil of gladness. Above who? God had anointed Joseph with the oil of gladness above his fellows because he loved righteousness. And instead of them to emulate him and love righteousness, what did they do? They hated him. They added iniquity to their iniquity. Then God did what? God brought salt upon their injury. And how did God do that? God gave Joseph dreams. And Joseph didn't know how to keep his mouth shut. And said, I know you hate me. Because I'm telling daddy that you people are bad. Wait till you hear the one I just saw. I had a dream yesterday. And they hated him. And a few days later, the boy came back again and said, ah, you who have not started, listen to the last one. Tell me the first one I had, only you guys were there. Now I saw one. The moon, the star, the, the moon, the sun, 11 stars were bowing down to me. You guys are in trouble. <laughs> if you don't repent, you are going to hell. And they did what? They hated him yet more. Because he loved righteousness. God decided to lift him up. And rather than repent and follow his footpath, they chose to hate him. But brethren, it caused havoc, it caused uh, destruction, it caused isolation, it caused persecution, it caused imprisonment unto Joseph. In fact, it caused forgetfulness. They forgot him. They thought he was dead. But God did not forget him. And then one day, God visited him in the prison. And brethren, the day that God visited him in the prison, when you go to Genesis chapter 41, verse 9, it's a long passage, we're not going to read all of it. There were a sequence of events that led unto that point. And then Pharaoh had a dream. And the people, that the butler, unto whom Joseph had previously interpreted his dream in the prison, Remember Joseph, because that was the day God had decided that Joseph would remember. Remembered, because I know today is the day that God has decided that someone here will be remembered, Amen. and you will remember in Jesus' name. Amen. And while Joseph was still there in the prison yard, the Bible says, Pharaoh sent in verse fourteen and called Joseph. 
and they brought him hastily. 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 Because you have waited long enough, your ascension to the throne will be fast. Amen. Somebody doesn't like that. Amen. Because you have waited long enough, your ascension, your promotion will be rapid. Amen. The, the qualification is no longer your certificate. The qualification now is the word that God gives unto you. Amen. That is what took this young man to the, to the throne. Remember what the Lord told us. That this year, many are going, are getting onto the palace. Amen. Many are getting to the throne. And I, and I know I am the, I'm number one. Amen. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. When Joseph had interpreted the dream, when you go to verse 38, Pharaoh said, can we find such a one as this? A man in whom the spirit of God is? Did Pharaoh say, can we find such a man as educated as this man? Did he say, can we find such a man as handsome as this man? Even though I'm handsome. Amen? Amen. Did he say, can we find such a man as muscular as this man? <laughs> no, even though even though Brofrenic is muscular. Amen. Amen. But he said, a man in whom the spirit of God. Brethren, what will set you apart this year? The spirit of Somebody is not sure. A man in whom the spirit of God is. You just go ahead and do what? Praising God. The spirit of God in you will set you apart. Amen. When the time comes for God to lift you up, all they are looking for is not your credentials, it's not your certificate, it's not your face, it's not the color of your skin, but what? The spirit of God. Because it is the spirit of God that will set you apart. It is the spirit of God that will lift you up. Why were they praising God? They expected a visitation. They needed a visitation. No one else could get them that visitation. And brethren, the Bible says, Pharaoh set Joseph over the kingdom. When you read that passage from verse 38 to verse 45. But in verse 46, and that's where I'm going to stop. The Bible says Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. When Joseph had his dreams, when his brothers began to hate him, when they decided that the more God promotes you, the more we will fight with you, he was 17 years old. They fought him for 13 years and they failed. They've been fighting you for so long. They've always failed. Amen. Now they've, they've gone to the point of final failure. Amen. Because God will lift you up this year. Amen. I say God will lift you up this year. Amen. The year 2013 is the year that God will perfect his sign and what in your life. Amen. It's the year that men will say, where did he come from? Amen. Where did she come from? Amen. We've been here all this while. They just overlooked us and they brought him. We've been here all this while. They overlooked us and they brought her. Oh, because of the Spirit of God. Because we will praise the Lord. Because we will worship the Lord. Because you realize that Paul and Silas praised God because they expected a visitation. They knew, going through the scriptures, that visitations comes from, come from God when you praise him, when you worship him. This year, brethren, as we start the year with a beautiful thanksgiving, praise God. Amen. Tell another, praise, praise God. Because as you praise him, he will visit you. Amen. And when he visits you, remember what the Bible says, when a man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Your promotion will come from the most unexpected source. Amen. Your lifting up will come from the most unexpected source. Amen. God's name will be glorified in your life. Amen. Let's bow down our heads. Just 
tell the Lord, just tell the Lord, that this year, Father, I've made up my mind, I will praise you. This year, I've made up my mind, I will worship you. I will sing praises unto you and unto no man else. Because your spirit must set me apart on the day of visitation. Because men must look upon me and see no one else but you. Because my lifting up will be because of no other reason but because I am yours. Father, we just thank you. We we'll bless your holy name. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. It's a year that we will praise you. Father, we will praise you. Lord, we will worship you. It's a year you will take us to the throne. It's a year you will take us to the palace. It's a year your spirit will set us apart. Father, be glorified. Take the preeminence. Have your way. Let your power be demonstrated in our lives. Let your power be demonstrated in our midst. Fulfill your word, Father. Fulfill your purpose. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know, peradventure, you are here this morning. You've not given your life to Christ. You cannot praise him if you are not born again. In fact, you find it difficult to praise him. By the time you sing, praise him twice. You want to sing the next Michael Jackson song. Are you here today, you are not born again, you want to give your life to Jesus? You want to raise up your hands and we are going to pray together. It's very important. If you cannot praise him, if you find listening to music that edifies the name of God difficult, you have not yet given your life to Christ. And that is the truth. You may not like it, but that is the truth. Maybe you want to start with him today. Maybe you want to say, today, Lord, I want to begin to praise you. That your Holy Spirit may set me apart. Is anyone I was saying to the Lord Jesus, today I give my life to you. Today I give my life to you. I want to start afresh. I want to start the new year with you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We believe that the message you have heard has transformed and inspired you. The only way we can earn God's respect is to live our lives according to the scriptures. We pray that God will help our inabilities as we work towards perfection. In Jesus' name, amen. For prayer and counseling, please contact us. We are the Redeemed Christian Church of God Christ Chapel. And we are located at Unit 7, 250 Bayview Drive, Barrie, Ontario, L4N 4Y8. Our telephone number is 705-737-9216 or 416-579-4526. You can also locate us on our website at www.rccgbayrie.org. Jesus is Lord. Amen.